All right, welcome to Phlebotomy Solutions Skin Punctures Procedures. How to do a proper skin puncture. All right, first, skin punctures are also known as dermal punctures, capillary punctures, and of course, finger sticks. These are the most common uh, phrases in the hospital you'll hear regarding skin punctures. So keep this in mind, dermal punctures, capillary punctures, and or finger sticks. Okay, let's talk about what we need to do with the patient first and foremost. First, we need to seat the patient comfortably. Basically, you want the patient seated if they're in a regular uh, seating chair, which is called the Fowler position. Then you want to make sure they're, they're seated comfortably. If they're laying down the, on the hospital bed, make sure they're propped up, seated comfortably. Then you want to ensure that the patient's hand is warm so that the blood circulates freely before sampling. This might mean that we might have to put a little bit of a warm pack on their finger. Uh, we might have to have them maybe uh, rub their fingers together. You might rub them together to make them get a little bit of friction so we can get some circulation going. Um, also, we need to ensure that the patient's fingers should be straight but relaxed to avoid the effect that which occurs when the fingers are bent. Again, we don't want the if fingers, uh, fingers bent. We want them relaxed and straight. And that's the way effects that occurs uh, with the fingers are bent, which is, you know, you could have some issues uh, uh, getting blood, squeezing blood samples, uh, might have a little more pain. Their tension on the finger can cause a little more pressure and pain for them. So we want to make sure that these steps are followed uh, right before we get a capillary skin puncture. All right, let's talk about the fingers that are used for a capillary skin puncture. Use only the middle finger or ring finger for sampling. We want to avoid the index finger, as you see the picture below. We want to avoid the pinky and the thumb. Some issues that can occur is that there's some more calluses on the finger, on the index finger, uh, a little more uh, closer to the bone and more a little more painful with nerves on the pinky and the thumb as well with callousness and some a little more pain. So we want to avoid those three areas and only focus on the middle finger or ring finger for sampling. All right, let's talk about the different type of lancets you might be using or coming across in the hospitals or labs. These are the spring-loaded one-time use lancets. We want to stay away from the manual lancets that basically you take the little uh, rubber cap off and you kind of stick them manually and you kind of go stick and pull out, which can be more painful and they should not be used because they don't have a safety device is attached to them so they're not really OSHA approved so we need to stay away from the manual and stick with the automatic lancets which are spring-loaded one-time use now the automatic the automatic ones which are called automatically determine the depth is basically these are lancets that are designed to basically puncture the skin of course retract these are uh, the spring-loaded ones and they have safety devices that prevent resticks because once the needle goes out it punctures the finger it retracts back in the lancet now these are spring loaded and spring activated and again they're designed to go a certain depth within uh, the finger there are some for adults and there's some for children the depths for adults is a little bit deeper than the ones for children so make sure you check your lancets on the depth of how far they go because there's some that are again for adults and some for children you don't want to use the one for adults for children uh, it can be more painful cause more bleeding and bruising and again you might get too close to the bone so, so you want to make sure you read your lancets use spring-loaded activated retractable lancets which is what's used in every hospital and lab not the manual lancets mm -hmm. Okay, once you've punctured the finger with your capillary lancet, uh, you want to do a couple things. Using a rolling movement of your thumb, lightly press and milk the finger from the top knuckle towards the tip. This is a single milking uh, procedure that you go from the knuckle and you move up towards the tip of the finger. And this stimulates the flow of blood towards the sample area. So again, your first uh, milking procedure uh, bring it from the back of the knuckle to the tip and then this again this stimulates the flow of blood towards the sample area and you want to get a slight gentle squeeze until you get your first drop of blood all right so let's talk about the always the always always wipe away the first drop of blood with cotton this is always missed when doing a capillary skin puncture, even when people do it to themselves, they always forget to wipe away the first drop of blood. Why? Why do we do this? Well, it could cause hemolysis. Now, 
the blood sample could be contaminated with alcohol and could cause hemolysis, which is the destruction of red blood cells. So if you do not wipe away the first drop of blood, it could have still some alcohol uh, still embedded within the skin samples and the tissue samples there. And if you collect it right away without wipe away the first drop, you could have that alcohol in the tube, which again, when it interacts with the blood cells, could cause hemolysis, the destruction of the red blood cells. So always, always, always wipe away the first drop of blood. Thank you for watching Phlebotomy Solutions Skin Puncture Procedures. Please subscribe, like, and share, and visit phlebotomysolutions.org for more information about Phlebotomy Solutions and our study package deals.